reading, books, libraries. It's all boring. I don't know if that's an unpopular opinion or not, but when I was growing up, it was pretty normal. But now I always hear people gush about how great it is to bundle up in a warm blanket with, quote, a good book, while the faint light of the fall evening peeks out of their cracked windows and hits their collection of plants perfectly. They've got a warm cup of chamomile tea they've prepared with the Keurig they use daily, and actually, it's a funny story. They were about to get one at Target because they were on sale, but they received one as a gift instead. <laughs> what a cool coincidence. <laughs> and they have a cat. I'm not saying that isn't a poetic life you've got going on over there, but I still don't like reading and have a cat allergy. It's kind of complicated. The thought of reading sounds really nice to me. It's supposed to be calming and good for your brain in some sort of way. I don't know how exactly, but people repeat it all the time, so it might be true. But I think I've got some weird reading PTSD from school because the other part of my brain thinks about how boring and slow and too quiet it's gonna be, and I feel like I have to take notes and memorize things and identify the plot points and know the names and symbolisms in To Kill a Mockingbird. And oh god, was I supposed to read up to chapter 7 by Thursday or through it? I used to love reading. I still have the strong memory of going to my elementary school's library and being excited to check out the next Geronimo Stilton book because I love the pictures and fun text they had. They always wrote the word cheese like this. And being able to read books that had more than 10 words on the page was impressive to a six-year-old. Whenever I found a book I liked growing up, I would read it nonstop. I was able to crush a 300 pager in two days, which I don't think is considered impressive anymore, but it was in fifth grade. And look, that was the only self-worth I had, all right? But when school started making us read books by force, it kind of took the fun away from from me. I don't like being told what to do with my free time, especially if you're gonna make me read a book written in the 1940s that I need cliff notes to decode just to realize that all the animals were communists. Also, it's 20% of my grade. I, I get it though. What else are we gonna do in English class? We can all understand each other, right? We're speaking English. I. That's gotta count for something, right? But the more I had to read really cryptic books in my spare time where the symbolism is in the color of the main character's curtains, and I'm not even observant enough to realize they had curtains, led me to not really in having fun <laughs> and also feeling like an idiot. I like my subtle tea like I like my coffee. Uh, splash in my face. How am I supposed to know what the A stands for adultery? I don't know, I, it could mean a woman for all I know. Asparagus! But all that isn't anything new. Everyone complains about English assignments. Everyone hates reading the scarlet letter. Everyone thinks school should die. However, something that also locked in my disdain for reading was my mom. Hi, mom! Of course, as a parent, you don't want your child to do nothing but play video games all day. That obviously leads to undeniable life failure. So what's the solution? make them read more. And on paper, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Honestly, I'll probably use that parenting technique too, when applicable. I think my mom made the obvious good parenting decision. But as the victim here, I believe I fell in the small minority where it had the overall opposite effect. During summer vacation, my mom would always tell me that I needed to read at least two books so I don't forget how to read. Whenever my mom would walk in on my brother and I playing Mario Kart together in the living room, she would ask if we've read yet today, which we would respond no, because reading's for chumps and then she'd lock us in our rooms to be chumps. I started hating reading so much, I would rather do literally nothing than read a book. There were a couple summers where I faked reading entire books because I just didn't want to read that much. There was this one about dragons, I think, called The Secret Country, and I still remember that just looking at the cover would put me in a bad mood because of hatred association. Screw your secret country. When I was being forced to read, I would sit angrily on my bed, open the book, move the bookmark a reasonable amount forward to make it look like I read, and then just sit there for 30 minutes staring at it. It was boring, and I don't know what was wrong with me. I could have had at least a decent time if I just tried to read the dang book, but I guess it turned into a dignity thing. Actually, the ironic part is maybe a year or so later, I decided to restart the same book and give it another shot on my own terms, and I finished it in two days. It was pretty good. I did it again with another book called Molly Moon and the Morph 
unearthing mystery. It's like the fifth book in this Molly Moon series. Uh, it's been a while, so I don't really remember the story, but it's about this orphan who can hypnotize people and has a pug. Anyway, it's funky because I actually read the first few books of the series on my own and remember really liking them. I would read them any chance I got, but as soon as I was forced to read this one, I just decided I'd rather literally waste my time and sit alone rebelling against reasonable parenting. But this time I never went back to read it. I, I think that might have been the point of no return for me. <laughs> I think the association of reading as a necessity or some sort of punishment has deep rooted itself in me. And now I just feel like reading isn't fun or I'm in trouble for something even though I live alone. I've tried listening to audiobooks, but honestly, they make me feel really lonely. I don't know why. It might be the lack of visuals. I like pictures and also no one else is around. It's the same with music. Uh, I've never been a big music person, so whenever I try to sit down and do something while listening to music, it somehow enhances this feeling of being alone and like time is going by slower, which makes me uncomfortable. So I always have either YouTube videos or more recently Twitch streams in the background. I'm still not super used to Twitch yet, but I like Ryukar's stuff. He plays Mario Maker. Sometimes I wish I read more. It might be good for me to slow down instead of always consuming fast-paced content on the internet, but on the other hand, I think it's just a preference I have that's been cemented with bad association. If you like reading, I think that's really great. I've got a lot of friends who like reading, and it's cool that you've got a really nice hobby you can fall back on to de-stress or however you people feel while staring at words all day. I was gonna say you should recommend a good book I should give a try, but I took a second to think about if I would actually try to read any suggestions, and being real with myself, the answer is no. <laughs> so, uh, enjoy that chamomile tea. Hey, hey, how's everyone doing? At home, I suppose? I'm lucky that I work from home and rarely leave the house, so quarantine isn't hitting me too hard. But to those of you who are outside people needing suggestions, may I suggest watching all of my videos in an infinite loop until we can leave our houses? Or Animal Crossing? I actually recommend that one more. Any mutuals who are playing, send me your friend code because I want to add you. I've been doing this thing where before I open up the game, I'll look at my friend list and see how many people online are playing Animal Crossing. Normally it's 100%. Anyway, however you're keeping yourself busy during quarantine, I hope you're doing well and thanks for watching my video. Bye.